happy Atlanta Art Week. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm Ana Lopez. I am the Executive Assistant and Membership Manager here at Mocha GA. And welcome to tonight's Artist Talk featuring Mocha GA's 2023-2024 Working Artist Project Fellow, Naman Choi. Um, yeah, well, I was thinking of the sandwich uh, sign 
talking about. I was thinking about that, uh, that was the very beginning. And the test that I had to solve is that how do I, so I get, I get the idea, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the, the, with the imagery, so I'm gonna put the first part, the, the front part, the other side to come up with the idea. But the other side, uh, instead of painting another landscape, I was thinking of just uh, stripe panel uh, patterns. Um, and many of you wonder the repetitions of patterns, meaning sort of abstract, hard edge abstract short lines. Um, I was never intended to um, sort of rely on or based on the, the abstraction, uh, history of abstract art in America because I was not, I was not wrong here. Uh, it somehow me at that point, like the, the format, the form of hard edge abstractions, but I mean, the, the arrival of this um, stride format is really through my language. Um, if you ever saw a Korean language formation, it's really constituted by three geometry shapes, which is line, circle, and square. Uh, those are really simple as that. And a lot of like variations, um, uh, a lot of uh, the variations happen within, within those three structures. So the bold stripes, which is the line, and this really signifies a human that is uh, connected between, um, resides between the heaven and earth, which is the circle symbolized, the skies and square symbolized, the earth, the, the human is really the mediator between the two. So that was inspired for that, that what if I created and repeated patterns with the line and, and made the line bolder and thicker, and that was the very beginning. Um, the Korean abstraction that we know, the you know, Korean monochromatic painting concept, well, you probably wonder if I have any association with this because I'm using one color. But again, a Korean's arrival of concept, well, the monochromatic painting or abstraction tradition is really not related from the negations of previousism. Uh, it's really the first time that Korean artists ever involve uh, the potential of exploring the material. Like pushing the material through the mesh, like you know, putting the, the materials on the outside of the heat, bake them. Like what would happen? Mix with different kinds of uh, you know, objects or substrates. Like what's going to happen on the surface? Like it was the first time they freely explore uh, the potential of the material. So it's more like a rather than a negation of it, it's more like an acceptance of those challenges and new explorations. And that's why people are responding now. And I'm, all, all, I'm aligned to that idea. Yeah, it was never a negation related to arrival of abstraction. It was not really the potentials of it. But I'm a Korean. I'm seeing this American landscape through the scope of a, of a Korean viewing. I right? let my, my heritage, my language, the way I communicate with my people. That was the, really the beginning of the shape canvases and the, all the variations of, of, of um, shape canvases. But yeah, the small, the scale, uh, uh, the sandwich board. I also thinking about the uh, representation on abstractions. Um, it, it's neither. It doesn't have to be either or. It can be both. There are a lot of artists have been um, trying to sort of uh, find a potential of both. Uh, I mean, I'm one of them. But in this formation, the representation and abstraction, they're almost like leaning against each other. Uh, they're, they're, none of them fall, if one of them fall, but they can't be stable. Like, I think, I think that was also uh, decision making when I, um, when I decided to make this arrangement. Uh, but yeah, they're smaller uh, pieces. I think the one that is next to me, that's Lee Su, he's a 16 year old high school boy, he's interested in pursuing art. The one in front of me is, is my daughter, 18 year old daughter, high school senior daughter, Haley, I named after them. So I could, they can, they can, they can remember. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that, um, uh, as I mentioned in my um, reading script, uh, you know, my children's in Marietta, and I have a teaching job in Augusta. So, um, you know, it, it's really nine years of an amazing, amazing family effort to get connected and to be together. The yearning and desires and all that emotion and content. Um, I have to acknowledge their part of it. I mean, I go through that, but they're also being very patient with me. They're also trusting me, and I had to, um, I had to acknowledge them in, in my, in my, in this, in this particular body of work. So um, again, like this body of work is very, very personal to me. 
I started making this entire body of work since November last year. So, um, I mean, for like eight years, over eight years, eight months, uh, a relentless and, and, and uh, razor focused studio practice, um, what was also necessary. Um, during the productions, I was able to see my children very much, and as you might have guessed. Uh, but uh, I feel like I'm on the road when I'm in my studio and reaching out to them. And uh, they're with me in my studio. I, I truly believe that because they, they're supporting and they're doing very well at schools and they trust their mother. And I think that's a beautiful sort of collaborative sort of exercise. Uh, it's a different type of um, art making, I think. So yeah, they're greeting you. <laughs> All right, but behind the, uh, the me and my children, uh, there's a circular, this is a 16-inch uh, circular panels. Um, this is not cradled. This is uh, almost like a signpost, right? Like the signpost has a sort of sign panel that are that is attached to a pole or uh, support structures. I was just fascinated by the immediacy of the, the, the signage. Like it, it instantly demands your attention, right? Like our eyes are already, are pretty much uh, used to uh, receive the attention from the screen. Uh, but like still those old time, uh, simple geometry forms, the shapes and the interval of, of the signposts, the colors of it, it instantly demanded, I thought it's fascinating. I want to make my painting that instantly demands my attention. That's the whole beginning. And again, like to respond to the artwork that is not painting, that is not on the wall, then I have to create artwork that uh, that, that has been supported, that has the structure that support the painting. So this is the arrival, the width and height of the structural supports that are actually the measurement of uh, the galvanic metal, uh, the, the, the line block, the road blockage, uh, the barricade, that's it. You'll get to see the barricade maybe soon. But it really is that the same measurement because I trusted whoever come up with the 16 inches width of that leg, then I had to follow it. Like, there's a reason for that. There's a mathematician and engineer came up with the exact number to hold the weight. So I follow that. Um, I, I use um, this carriage bolts uh, that was kind of nerve-breaking drill the hole like that, that four exact hole like that after finishing the painting. I'm sure my fabricator also very nervous that I uh, he said that he had to like he had to take a little bit of breath every time he gets to come in and drill a hole. But we made it through and we drill a hole like that. And what's interesting about this place kind of four carriage holes, it's almost like, I don't know, like the um, the rule of third frames within the picture. You know what I'm talking about? The the, 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 the viewfinders of so that's that, the four sort of like a focal points in that rule of third that is in the middle box if you divide the picture points into an equal nine parts. It's definitely the, the biggest <laughs> nine parts, but I thought that's creating interesting focal points. Uh, again, to hold and, and hold and grab the attentions from the audience a little longer and hold that attention a little longer. That was the whole beginning. Um, the, this was very special to me because that road is, was taken from a winding road of West Virginia. Um, this is, um, you know, my partner's uh, uh, hometown. Uh, I get to visit his hometown every Thanksgiving, and that was something I should see. It was like a cold winter in the, in the uh, rural country uh, around the mountain. And I have a very tender feeling about this, um, about the town and the long and winding path to reach to the highway, right? I think it's very metaphorically related to his career. <laughs> like until I reach to the highway, which is like, you know, put the uh, drive, the D bump D, and then you just drive away until I get that speed, I have to go through all the winding path. I think it's very, very beautiful. Like it's really symbolized his path. So I decided to paint the, his, his, um, his hometown, his winding roads of his hometown. Those rocky roads, and there's, there's, like, there's a telephone pole, like barely supported by the structures. There's not enough lights there, the trees were there. It's, 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 uh, it's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's very humble, but it's, um, it's just a lot of uh, feeling, a lot of feelings when I get to see this landscape of his hometown, to, you know, to, to even like make me understand it's 
his life, as his, um, I guess his personality, his upbringing better. Like I get to see it. I hear, I heard about it, but like just getting to see it in person, I think that spoke to the time. Um, also, the 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 decision making of, of of putting this artwork, the painted part in that structure, I decided to also paint and include the structure as part of the context of painting. Uh, that's why I get to see those painted uh, called socks. It's two legged called socks, but that also um, inspired by my partner who wears socks all the time at the indoor outside. It's just fascinating. It's just all the interesting socks collections he has. I thought this is his, his portrait. Um, and, uh, uh, yes, and then the, um, the sandbags. Uh, it has no problem holding the weight of the 60 inch diameter um, uh, panels, but I think there's a, you know, the, the colors, the flesh colors of orange, which is of the complementary opposite color of the blue hue. I uh, thought it was a nice, sort of not only the physical weight bearing, but also interesting balance and informal decision ways. Um, so that was that. Um, the, the, uh, the repeating um, the tire cast, the production of the tire cast of the use of tire um, that I fabricated in 2018. Um, you know, I've been driving to 248 miles, um, that's about a 500 miles round trip for nine years. And I go through tires, as you might have guessed, and I decided to instead of discard them, uh, I would like to present tires, but not necessarily how Rauschen were presented. And he already done it, I had I didn't have to. He done it. Done it. I mean he did like glass tire, he'd done it. Like he, he did a tire print, he'd done it. So like how can I do that? So instead of a tire as it is, I thought I would present tire uh, to like detach from the actual tire. Um, like what if I present tire, the used up scrap tire, like how it's presented in the museum, like the marble, like the fake foam marble carved tire, like what would that, what, what would that happen if I present like that? Oh, that was the very beginning, so fiberglass and marble dust, um, I like it. <laughs> I, I think that it's, uh, it really enhanced me, now that I'm like, speaking about the traveling, I think it's really uh, creating and enhancing the tire itself to symbolize the mobility and um, it's, a, it's a modern and contemporary world of shoes if I go painted shoes and I thought it was like a lot of like uh, references that I can use from history but I've never present this tire on a pistol before. I never did that. I, I, mean, I did that at the stack once. I like it okay. Okay, all right. Uh, I, put, I, I hung up on the wall and look okay, but it's too far away. I can't really see the tire tread. But I present like this, I can really see this red tire. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that, was, that was the very first idea. Um, and I like how this artwork um, sort of blend and create kind of like a pause in between the busy patterns and visual, uh, uh, formal visual, like the instant visibility of my other works uh, demands your attention. Um, moving to the, uh, the three, uh, uh, six uh, circles, these pieces right here. Uh, I made two of these six uh, sort of stacked circular shape, four of three stacked circular sculptural painting, they, yeah, they, they painted on both sides, um, which was simply inspired by the three sig signals. I mean, that was what it is, like red, green, blue, like I thought that's interesting. It instantly demanded the attention, and furthermore, it just asked you to stop right there, just control your behavior, you gotta follow that. So instead of like dangling, I actually thought about doing that, but what if I, what if, what if, what if I use gravity? Like, what if, like, the three, like, you know, instead of, like, dangling them, what if, like, just grab, like, use gravity and pull it down and then, you know, use the floor? Let's see what's going to happen. And this is what it is. Like, it's really a simple response. Um, and this also, I started, uh, I had no idea. At first, I started this and, in fact, you know, give my drawing to fabricator. I had no idea. Why. I mean, yes, the, the signals, yes, that was the very first beginning, but I had no idea what to do with this. But then once I began to work one another, like one from next, like next to uh, next, and I realized these are family. <laughs> They're like a two tall one, like a parents, and like four little ones, like a kid. 
oh, they're families, right? Like, they're like, I didn't realize that. So, and I was present all six of them, and you guys know a two, right? A two are, and you said, like, yeah, those four little babies have different birthmark. You look at those blue, uh, the pedestal on that side, like, not everything, not every baby has paint, <laughs> baby. The little ones paint on the same side, especially the, the base part, so they have all paint on all different sides. And that, that's a birthmark. That's a brilliant idea. Um, but that was that was very beginning. So like, who, once I get the idea, they're like a family, they're they're an adult and a little child. Then that helped me to like think about the 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 the, uh, the layout. Like they are, they have to be together, like especially like that, like children's and like have children and another and like they look at each other or the children's turning away from mother. Like there are a lot of like conversation can be made based on the viewer's experience. Um, so, so yeah, that was that was the, the beginning. And as you know, like this painting, this uh, the first thing, the sculptural painting, they're painting both sides, the front side with kind of like a head and a and a stripe, a gold stripe. The other side has a little buttons there, so the viewers can choose which side they want to see. Because I, I never, I don't, I, I refuse not, I refuse to dictate which side should be seen. Um, so uh, they're here. Um, and the diamond signpost with the two flags. That was interesting too. I mean, they're, they're everywhere, right? They're like really like stop and feel, like give you the directions, like don't go there. Um, I just like, instead of, um, I just, I was like, what if, the, the, the fascinating things about the signpost is that the, the design and, and, and the shape, the tension, some, all the, the quality that artists see for when they, when they started to Think about the idea, the scale of the idea, the scale of the pieces, the presentation of the pieces, it's already solved. It's already solved. So I thought I would just borrow a direct measurement from the signposts that are the scale of the diamond is already ideal measurement that are calculated by a mathematician and engineers that is visible and far away. So I thought I would use the exact numbers, but only I would use that formation to paint. The landscape, like I, I, was, I, was, I, I see that that's a perfect problem solved uh, sculptural that is right there for me to paint. So that was again, like I decided to paint those landscape painting, and I followed the same format: I drill two holes once I finish the painting, and carriage holes to support the panel. Exact measurement from from the the actual diamond shaped signpost. But what's different about is the base of the signpost, as you know, because those signposts are usually uh, under the ground, right? Uh, but uh, I can't really do that here. I actually have a little key to drill, drill here on a concrete floor. I, I was told that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> then my fabricator think that, you know what, why don't we use like collapsible, like, like, a, like an umbrella, right? Like you just collapse it and open it. Why don't we do that? That's a brilliant idea. So now it has four legs, four feet. <laughs> so I just had to paint uh, two stops out of four. Uh, also, the flags, I have to have it. I can't explain why. It's like, it's like a waving at you. It has to, I have to have it. Because diamond shape is kind of an unstable shape to me. It's kind of a, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a square shape. It's most stable. But when you present it, it's kind of unstable. It definitely needs some kind of balance formally. But I mean, I, I got uh, the group sign company, they have it. Home Depot, they have it. The vinyl yellow, uh, the orange, you know what I'm talking about. The flag that they have. But I don't like the shine from, I just don't like it. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this in the context of painting. Then why don't I use the cotton duck? Uh, orange color cotton duck, which is again one of the oldest substrate of oil paint. Um, so, so my fabricator sewed the sewing part to, to create a little, little pocket uh, to, to hold the rods. Um, and uh, what is it called? The liquid glue? Uh, liquid, liquid, uh, give me that name. Nails. Liquid sewing, uh, sewing, you know what I'm talking about. Liquid, liquid stitch. Liquid stitch. To, on the, around the hem, is 
I like sewing them because I, I don't like once I sew them, it'll, it'll weigh down the edge of the flag. I would like exact the trousers are shaped like that. <laughs> so I, I, that's probably not a good idea. So, liquid, liquid, liquid sewing glue on the edge of it uh, to prevent us from like losing that construction. But yeah, and that was that was that. And barricades, as you see, I started with the big one. I have a clear idea that I want barricade. Uh, like I want it. I, that's the, the big barricade, 95 inches width. I, I want to have it. I really, really have to have it. <laughs> um, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant design. The three long panels uh, in that middle of the panels. Um, the, the, each panel has a stripe patterns. In the middle, there is 36, uh, 30 inch by 40, uh, 48 inches a sign. I thought that's a brilliant, brilliant design formally. So, so there they are. Uh, exact same measurement, all fabricated, all made, uh, uh, fabricated in wood. Um, uh, and then, as you know, you probably noticed that the, the way I find my wooden panels, um, I use a, what is it called? Unbleached titanium with a little hint of orange to it. Uh, it's like a mimicking of like a really clean wood panel color. But also, since I'm going to use the, the, the bluest blue hue, I want to I tint the, the ground with a color that is opposite from the blue, so with a little hint of orange instead of pure white or the dull down the unbleached titanium. I always tint that a little bit. I don't have the recipe, but I always mix the three buckets ready uh, so they always have a consistent uh, um, color match. Uh, but what I realized is that when I use this color, these all, every single uh, uh, paintings, the sculptural paintings are pretty heavy, but it's seen kind of lightweight. But it, you know, in other words, it, it really uh, distracts you from, from reading or guessing the, the gravity, how, you know, the weight of the object is seen lightweight. It's so, Amazing how color the sea our eyes. Um, but yeah, everything. The, the orange light balls is painted in uh, fluorescent orange, uh, attached uh, socks, <laughs> and that that I get. Um, uh, the sandbags that are on the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the back side of the structures. Um, I, I loved it when I first attached to that. Trust me, it took a lot of engineering part to attach my painting like that. I mean, again, these panels are extremely heavy. They're solid. They're one inch thick. So like, it's kind of a panel that you use for like tabletop. Um, so there has to have a, a specific order to assemble this. There are a lot of uh, trial and error, but I, I just loved it, how, how demanding it is, how, how the, the Monday uh, rose line just like, suddenly presented in, this, uh, in, the, in the exhibition space it, it, it's, it's less intimidating, it is less, uh, what's the right word? It, it, it's almost inviting you, it's exactly what, the, what, what this image thought in the actual, actual rose sign. Um, but yeah, um, again, I, I use a number two line brush. Uh, these are acrylic wash. Um, simply because the, the gouache dries matte and the gouache uh, it is designed to be used for uh, industry, so it, it's, it's flattened surface. In other words, it doesn't allow the, the, the personal brush marks, the speediness of it, the gestures of it, the right handed or left handed. Um, it, it doesn't show that, it completely eliminate, eliminate and flatten it because in the industry they don't really need your touch, right? Like everybody has to have a consistent, right? Um, so I, I like that, I like that. But um, number two, my brush, I mean, I thought I would use a bigger brush when I start tapping this big surface to cover. Um, this is the biggest one single image that I've ever painted. Uh, I've tried to look for brushes, but it doesn't, it, it didn't speak to me, so I went back to two, number two, my brush, and I'm, I'm still happy with that. Um, so yeah, number two line brush, and I paint every single tiny branch and every single little leaves that uh, that is that is not uh, 
worth watching when you're looking the far away viewing. Uh, but because we have distance and mean making effort to, to compress the distance, right? Um, that part of the physical of the physical spreads the physical distance compressed and distant, that is not possible in reality that I can do that in the painting, thanks to the linear perspective. Um, so all of these tiny little info, uh, tiny little information in the far away important to me. That's why I use smaller marks instead of a bigger marks. Um, so yeah. So then once I see the big Y, the full scale barricade, I mean speaking of like consistent like another trial, but big and small, I gotta make the small one, right? So the, the, the half barricade, that having two, I complete that piece like uh, less than two weeks before the, before the, the first day of the show. Uh, I have to do it, I have to do it. Uh, so that's the half of the barricade, but instead of like repeating the same format, uh, diamond shape, there they are. So they're together, side by side. Uh, in that corner, like creating a, a like visual way in that two open corner. Um, then the six, you know, the stack circular shapes there, and you know, the three uh, circles, they're there, uh, they're, they're there, <laughs> and uh, more tires. So yeah, that means I have a clear idea of what I'm gonna make as I develop the painting. The curatorial decision was um, was seemed, was seemed natural to me, and uh, um, you know when I first did the site visit of Mukherjee, I knew this is uh, this is uh, this is not an excellent uh, painting uh, venue because it's, it's, there's no natural lights and it's always dark. So I thought this is a perfect space for sculpture, not necessarily for painting. And that was another reason why I decided to not to hang a single piece on the wall. But I thought I would, at least one time, I would like to put a spotlight on this venue that provides an amazing opportunity for an artist like me. My like three artists a year being chosen and um, have freedom to create a full body of work uh, with, the, with the funding and a solo museum has an opportunity with the apprenticeship. I think that's a fantastic opportunity, and uh, it should be. This place also needs to be seen. <laughs> Every single floor, the little bumps, uh, paint splashes, all the imperfection of the space should be seen. So we did an extra LED lighting just to brighten up the space a little bit more. Um, what else I was going to say? Um, um, did I miss anything? Anybody have any questions? Anybody, did I make spoke too much? Oh yeah, but there's those patterns, we're creating patterns on the columns. Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I was, I thought there's four columns that really like, those are hard to ignore, because they're there. Um, they're creating a tremendous challenge for artists, like they're, the presence is pretty, uh, the presence of this, this metal pole, the poles are hard to ignore. So you would either have to like try your best to ignore it or take advantage of it, and I decided to um, sort of include this metal pole uh, as part of uh, part of my exhibition. So as you know, it was painted um, blue and fluorescent orange. Um, my amazing studio assistant Lucy Lokovich, she came and painted, repaint the entire pole with clean white and paint this stripes. Uh, Oh my goodness, like 13, like eight hours a day for like five days. Uh, it seemed easy, but like we, 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 we we're both painter and we decided not to use any vinyls or we're going to paint it. So yeah, she didn't mind and climb upstairs and paint like hard edge like that. Uh, I think all of these pieces are mainly grounded, uh, then having those high visible patterns <clears throat> that are close from the ceiling. That way the viewers can fully moving their eyes like the ground to the ceiling, like potentially, potentially um, experiences the, the full scale of the space, the height of the space, like moving their eyes up and down. Um, that, that was a brilliant idea. I, I loved it. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'll be very sad when I have to read this. 
But um, um, yeah, I think this I. What did anybody have an architecture design? Like, is that I beam? Is it like a metal I beam? I think. Um, is it not I beam? Yeah. Metal beam? I think it's fantastic. I think without this metal I beam, there's no Chrysler Tower. You know, these workers on the memes, the pictures. I thought, okay, that's that's very very American. And so I thought I had to put little highlights on that. So I decided to paint those. But yeah, uh, you know, like again, like as I started to think about this, uh, this exhibition, um, I, I started to build a small maquette um, and look at those maquettes uh, till the last day of, of the show, just to make sure that what the uh, the pieces, the arrangements on it, the constant shift and change and variation is this. Is this okay? I constantly review it. I even brought it um, before the show is out and to make sure what I'm seeing in the miniature format, what I'm seeing in the actual scale, is it, is it really corresponding? Is any deviation should be made? Uh, there has to be a, a, a lot of decision making because uh, I'm, I'm really paying attention not only in my piece but also in relation to the space. So that was it. But yeah, let's hear. Like, if anybody have any questions or anybody have any thoughts, I would love to hear. I know I just, you know, I, I just talk through. Maybe I talk too much, but I have a question. Yeah. How do you, given that sculpture has been the root, like a substructure, to present paintings? Hello. How how is the root back to the wall? If that's like a, because this is you said you didn't want to hang a piece of artwork. Yeah. And you've utilized sculpture as a means to activate a painting in a particular way? I, I think so. I think, um, mean, but like conventional painting is meant to be hanging on the wall, like waiting to be watched, uh -huh. like being like stuck on the wall. But I want to liberate painting from that wall. <laughs> right. Um, but what's going to happen if I'm liberating painting from the wall? Um, sculptors are already doing it. Um, but do I still have to stick with that idea? Like I, I really wanted to see it. Like it's really the idea. Like I want to see what, what what's going to happen if the painting is coming towards the, the viewers, uh, thirty-two inches closer to you than 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 on the wall. What what, what is that? What will death do? Like that was my. Uh, I was curious too, and then I'm happy how it turned out. It's it's more inviting. Their painting is coming to you, and you're coming to the painting. Right. Um, that's, that's a success. I think Adam Reinhardt once said, uh, sculpture is something you back into while you're looking at a painting. <laughs> so I like, the, I like the fact that you've explored the substructure in such a way that the, everything becomes intrinsic to the painting. So I don't know how you'd find your way back to the wall. <laughs> in, this, in this context, because the work is so strong, visually striking, that I think so. I think this is a, it's a healthy challenge. It, it really is. Yeah. It is. It's a. It's a, a breakthrough for me. I think um, my work referencing to the sculptural painting. My previous work, uh, uh, isometric cube shape on the wall, like uh, two two inches depth elevated from the wall. Like it's already going into that sculptural directions. But I have no skill set to realize this. But I just keep uh, trying to find the resources who could realize my vision. And I was lucky enough to find those skills um, in Augusta. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my school, uh, he's, a, he's not with us, but uh, he's a he's our school technician. But he came, he, I just showed him my drawing. Um, but I also learned that like communicating with the uh, sculpture people, like you can't really show them a doodle, like they can't get it. You will always get a phone call from them, like give me the exact measurement, like even like the rounded edges of the diamond. Like my fabricator is then uh, you, you're saying, I told them just to round the edges, and they're like, you mean like a dime size or quarter size? <laughs> a beer beer bottle? They go, what do you mean? Like I learned that like, you can't be very specific when communicating with the with the three D people, and I loved it. I love how like painting. There's so many like painting like free yourself, like you express yourself. Like I think there's anyway, anyway. So uh, so yeah, I did like a three different drawing that shows like three quarter viewing, frontal viewing, and all like. 
I just showed him my drawing and I told him this is what I want to do. And I have the panels, but I don't have the supports and I need your help. He's like, no big deal. So yeah, I always admire uh, you know, those, those skill set. I mean, I mean, woodworking, I mean, you think it's easy, but it's a, it's a you gotta do math. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of math. An engineering part, like how wide and thick the metal, pole, uh, the wooden pole has to be, then they have to come up with the weight, like it's from their actual calculation or their, their, their experience, work experience, like this much of a thickness, but over the weight. I mean, they have a lot of knowledge there, uh, and, and it's difficult to find those, those skills. Uh, I, I find it very difficult to find those woodworkers in town, but I was very fortunate to find those people and that they're happy to work with me. Whenever I toss them a, a very sloppy drawing, they just somehow get it. They've been working with me for a few years. But yeah, I, I admire them. I do. Yeah. Anybody have any question? I'd love to hear. I wonder if you had you didn't mention anything about gender or um, gender or the interplay between masculine and feminine energies, but I've seen a lot of that in, in this world. Um, you know, aside from the <laughs> sculptures, but also even in the, the paintings themselves, they all have sort of a big shape, and there's there's a, a road running through. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if that occurred to you at all. And I was thinking of a boy and a girl. Yeah, and, I think you know, it's it's. Instead, I would answer this, instead of like a gender, I would, um, I would answer this, um, like female artist, uh, mother, uh, mother artist, the uh, mother artist, mother and educator artist, it's probably not sound professional. <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't, Agree with me, but over the period of my career, I have consciously aware. Like, if you're a teacher, then you're not a serious artist. On top of that, if you're a mother and a teacher, then you're not a serious artist. I want to challenge that. Like, I can, like, I'm a mother and a teacher, then I can make the most challenging artwork. Like, I'm five three, but I want to make the work that is bigger than me. Like, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to make the work that challenge me. What, what does that even mean? Like, uh, you know, so that, that probably you read out of you read that out of this work. Like, I, I mean, what do you what do you mean? Like, female work? Like, what's that even? Who said that? <laughs> I, I don't agree. Uh, so, and like, mother, uh, painter, painter, also, right? Uh, and an artist. Teacher and Asian. <laughs> that there's a lot of like, hey, my hair, my hair, my hair. Probably she can't do that. Probably she's doing like this thing. Like she probably can make the intimate scales that is like within the uh, the living space, domestic space. Like I would challenge that. Uh, I can't do it. I have no skill set to realize it. But I would find it uh, to realize that vision. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you read that. I, I, I had that in my mind, but uh, I didn't want to say it out of front, because I, I'm just happy to be a mother, I'm just happy to be a female painter, and happy to be a teacher to support my art without the, the fear of, like, you know, the relying on my artistic career and sales. Like, I'm happy to be all that role. It's, it's never creating a, a, a barrier. Like, it, it's never an obstacle. It was, it was always, it has been a, a strong content of my work and a strong um, encouragement, strong energy, like gasoline of my studio practice. So, um, but yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, so, looking at the word, uh, you kind of have been, in my opinion, you kind of built a world yeah. in the room. Um, I think you have characters that you're expressing how these pieces are like mother and children yeah. and how there's big and there's little but they have like relationship to each other, um, maybe in gender or maybe in like something else. But I'm really noticing like you've kind of built this world around it and I was curious 
you kind of talked about your inspiration behind the images and things like that, but I'm curious if there's sort of like a curiosity you have with story, with storytelling or yeah. things like that. I, I think I, I love storytelling. I, I love it. I, I, I mean, for, I think, especially for this body of work, I think I want to be like, the, the honest as possibly I can be. Like, I, I want to be true to myself. I don't, um, I might have been not, uh, I wasn't lying on previous work, but I, I was thinking of a lot of other things, uh, like with, that, with this sale, like for example, you know, like, uh, you know, it is looking, whatever, like with the acceptance of the ending of the upcoming officer too. There are a lot of other things that I would think when I could create body of work because um, my previous uh, workspace has very heavy teaching mode, so when I have to make my MCU practice in that limited amount of time, I have to hit a home run every time. Um, but but this um, moving to a different school, I have more um, studio practice and which was appreciated and supported tremendously. Then I can be really use those those supports uh, supports. I mean time, giving me time to producing my artwork. Then I I, I can be honest. Like I can be really 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 honest. Like you know this is this is my life for the past nine years, and we all going through this kind of moment in our life. And are, are we sharing this story? Like, is, is, is it my story? But it is also our story. Um, and I think it's important to open that up. Um, but that was the idea. That was the idea. And once I had the idea and started to see my work develop, like, I started to think of like a conversation between the arts and the conversation between the art sustained throughout the layout. And the whole show creates a world and uh, within the consistent story. So it's a learning experience for me too, actually. Um, I never um, asked to design the entire museum show by myself. I was always included as a group show, or even the solo show that I have to like, consider the space and all that. Like, this is like a whole open space for me to create whatever I want to say. Um, so that really helped, like the, uh, the opportunity and possibility and accessibilities. And that, that was those helping me to create a world. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, so I noticed like, a lot of parallels, like the design, design here and then over here, and then over on this piece there's the legs that are the same as here on the circle, and the circle goes you know, down here. Yeah. Circles, and there's a lot of like, were those intentional or are they just have to touch things? Um, um, I, I, I think so. It's like, like I mentioned going back to the creating a world, like they're like, they're, they're not doppelganger, but like they're like a different, different, but it, like it's a, you know what I mean? It's like you're sibling, but they're all not the same. You know what I mean? Like they have similar characters, but they're a little different. I, I think, I think these body of work maybe does that. It's almost big, going around from it, but repeating six times in small formats. There, that's, that's why it seemed like, I could, like it's like a world, it's like a, a consistent story. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was, yeah, totally, I always intended that. It has to have a repetition so they can get reminded of other, you know, they can see this, but they can remind it of you know, my other piece. Um, but yeah, definitely. Okay. Down at the end. Yeah. I, when you were speaking to me, aspect of how you chose to move away from the wall. I've been kind of staring at your circles and yeah. from a farther view I'm feeling like the skies are giving them tornadoes. Or kind of know. like the, the shape, the side of the shape. And then also kind of you're thinking with your mention of the repetition of the lines and how they're hard edges. It kind of reminds me of like a moving traffic light. Like, so Ooh. like Experientially, you have very stable, very sturdy yeah. um, motifs to the eye, yeah. and when you really engage, right. you can kind of evoke a feeling of emotion. Yeah, I just really appreciate that. Oh, thank you, thank you. I think, I think, um, I, I mentioned many times, but I think it's, uh, there's a challenge for being in a painting, it's a single image, but 
by which she used to see moving images, like the shorts and reels, and how do I hold my viewers already, you know, already used to seeing those moving images in the short period of time, a short attention and a moving image, like how do I, how do I hold that attention at least like one minute of their time, or two minutes of their time, like how do I hold that attention? It's a single image, but yeah, it has to, it's, it's one of those many sequences uh, from moving, uh, the movement, right? Like you're on the road, and this is one of these images. And how do I, how do I, how do I convey the ideas of this is one of the moving, many, many sequences of moving images? So this abstract patterns, uh, I was hoping that it enhances uh, the movements, uh, the, the road sign, whatever. Like if you get to see the director to hold your attention while you're behind the wheel. <laughs> um, I, I definitely intentionally use those as a, as a strategy. Yeah. Cool. I have a question. Yeah. So I'm looking at these circles. When you were painting them, were they flat? Were they already in the shape that we're yeah. seeing them? Everything, yeah. Already on the shape. Okay. Yeah, already on the shape. So yeah, you gotta be place it up, like you have to lean against the wall and mm. rotate it. But this wasn't difficult because it's already presented, like it's already I know. I can already see like, which part is not showing, which part is absolutely showing, so I can already start operating with that. Mm -hmm. But those the structural parts, like those are actually pretty, pretty difficult, especially diamond shape with that format. Like I have to cut a uh, uh, two inch uh, insulating pink foam to create, a, like cut it as a 45 angle to support on my ease. <laughs> These are, by the way, easel paintings. You can't I, I, love it. I love working on an easel. Mm -hmm. I've always seen my father's work, make, make a painting on the easel. And, um, you know, the easel painting is kind of like a metaphorical referring to my, my family legacy, like a backup like easel painter. Um, but it requires a, a little bit of uh, uh, maneuver. But, uh, but yeah, already this is already built like that. Here too, the panels, there's the sandwich board that's already made like that. Like once I get to see that work like that, I get to see the scale, and I can it inspire me. The presence of the sculptural pieces inspire me to make a decision of how big the image is going to paint, um, what image is going to paint. Like it really, once I see it, then it inspires. Why don't we give Namwana a round of applause?